If you somehow missed it, which you may well have done because it was just a website update, this is Apple's new M5 iPad Pro. And I've been using this as my main iPad for the past two weeks or so, because I wanted to see if there's any kind of realistic difference between that and my M4 iPad Pro, which I've been loving since last year. So let's see if we can. Let's talk about the new stuff here first, because even though this is just a chip bump, there's quite a few mini updates here, which are kind of easy to go unnoticed. Obviously the big one is the M5 chip, and there's a lot of jargon around this with neural accelerators and things like that. But what you need to know is it's Apple's latest and greatest chip for the iPad, and it's going to make everything just a little bit faster as well, but especially in kind of two key areas. One is AI workloads, and the other is in your graphical workloads. So if you do a lot of those, you might see some difference, which we'll get on to later. Also, all the M5 iPads start with 12 gigabytes of RAM, which they never used to, and they go up to 16 gigabytes in the larger models like this one. Apple have put in their new N1 chip in here, which means it's a bit better at networking. It gives you Wi-Fi 7. And if you get the cellular version, you get the C1X chip, which just means all of your cellular stuff is going to be a more efficient, which is nice. The storage on here is much faster than the previous generations as well. And lastly, you are getting fast charging on here now as well, which is just a nice quality of life improvement. You can get up to half the battery in about 30 minutes of charge and to be honest i've used that a few times and been genuinely shocked at how quick this charges up compared to my m4 so that's one area i did notice the difference but that's kind of all the main sort of under the radar new things there are a few other little bits and pieces as well like 120 fps support for external monitors and things like that but those are the main updates but of course the other thing you're getting here with the m5 version is that redesign that we got last year this is actually apple's thinnest device they've ever made this is 5.1 millimeters and it's unbelievably thin. I actually have the 11 inch model M4, which is a bit thicker, but this 13 inch version is just crazy. And yes, it is slimmer than the iPhone Air as well, which is wild. Obviously that comes with use for the Pencil Pro as well, which we saw last year. Oh, and of course you're getting access to the new and improved Magic Keyboard as well, which is a much better experience than what they used to do. But the biggest thing of that new redesign is the tandem OLED display, which is just absolutely gorgeous on this larger version as well. It really sings and it really is the best display that Apple make by such a large margin. I really wish they would put this into their monitors or something like that or into the MacBooks because it's such a pleasure to use. It's also the perfect screen for this new wallpaper that we put out recently, which I'll link below. The big question though is, are you going to see a kind of big difference if you do decide to upgrade? And if you're on the M4, the M3, or the M2 versions of the iPad, day-to-day -day usage, you're really gonna struggle to notice the difference. And even with the M1, you might struggle to see some difference because Apple made these chips so good. It's like going from like 100 miles per hour to like 140 miles per hour. It's quicker, sure, but you're already going so fast, it's kind of hard to notice that very kind of incremental difference. If you are on the older chips though, so the iPad from 2018 or 2020 before they moved to the M series, you will absolutely see the difference here and you'll get access to a bunch of other features as well. So if you're on those older chips, now's never really been a better time to jump up to the new ones. The only time you will see those differences from the M2, 3 and 4 is in those kind of fringe areas. So large file transfers, gaming and doing AI workloads. And in fact, I do have my M4 here. So why don't we just directly compare it and I can show you what it's been like to use. And just for reference, this is an M4 iPad Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And this is the M5 iPad Pro with a terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. All the apps are shut. I'm gonna open a bunch of stuff which I'd normally open on a day to day and we'll try and see if there's a difference. So as far as I can tell, these all opened up pretty much exactly the same rate and there was no kind of major difference in terms of usage and things like that. So yeah, like I said, day-to-day -day stuff isn't too bad. So what I'm gonna do is close those, but I'm not gonna close them, I'm gonna leave them in memory. And let's try opening some bigger apps. So let's start off with DaVinci, which is a big kind of video editing one. Let's see which one goes first. The M5 was a little bit quicker, I'll give it that. Not massively over here though. Okay, let's try something a little bit more heavy. This is my last YouTube video on DaVinci Resolve. It's about 12 minutes, 46 seconds. So I'm going to export them both at exactly the same time. We go on my iPad and go. Okay, so the M5 iPad Pro did pull ahead a little bit, but not by much. It took 10 minutes and 43-ish seconds and now the M4 iPad Pro with slightly less RAM, 
<laughs> was around 11 minutes, 13 seconds. I hit the wrong button there. But yeah, probably around a kind of 30 second sort of difference in speed there, which actually isn't massive at all, which probably just goes into the theme of if you've got an M4, you're probably fine to not need to upgrade. Next up, I wanted to try some kind of powerful AI stuff, but I don't actually use that much. So I downloaded an app called Draw Things, and this generates an image from text and it does it all on device. There's no cloud processing or anything like that. And with the same prompt, the M5 iPad Pro managed it in one minutes and 39 seconds. And the M4 took substantially longer at six minutes and two seconds, which really shows how beefy those neural accelerators in the M5 chip are. And finally, I tried some gaming too on Wuthering Waves. And while I could tell the M5 felt a little bit nicer, I did struggle to see any major differences here. However, I did run a Geekbench score on here and yeah, the M5 is substantially higher. This scored 74,086 and the M4 scored 55,686, which was, you know, substantially lower. So there's definitely some differences there for sure. Before we move on though, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Paperlike and their new Paperlike 3 screen protector. If you don't already know about it, Paperlike is a screen protector for your iPad that really makes it feel like you're drawing or writing on a premium pad of paper. Using the latest version of their NanoDuck technology, it adds resistance and grip to your pencil strokes, giving it that wonderful papery feel. But the best part of Paperlike 3 is the new butterfly application method. This uses four layers on the protector to ensure you get a completely bubble and dust free application application, which is pretty ideal because I always at least get one bubble in there. There's an innovative on-screen guide for you to use along with a help tool to make sure you get it perfectly aligned too. And hey, if you do end up messing it up, Paperlike includes two in the box, so you can just give it another go. I've used Paperlike on most of my iPads for years now, and it is genuinely the only screen protector for iPad I recommend and one that I think is actually worth getting. So if you want to check it out, I'll link it below. One thing I did notice in my usage though, and this isn't directly linked to the M5, but it is directly linked to the 13 inch size of iPad, is how differently I've used this compared to my standard 11 inch. I do prefer the 11 inch iPad over the 13 inch, and I made a video on that not too long ago, so I'll link it below if you want to check it out. But this demo unit from Apple is the 13 inch version. And to be honest, I've gone back to using this more like a laptop again. I'm actually using the Apple Pencil a lot less. I'm having it in the keyboard case a lot more and I'm doing lots of kind of more regular computing tasks on it. And I have to admit, iPadOS on this 13 inch screen over the 11 absolutely sings. It's such a nice experience having these windowed apps and being able to switch between them all the time. It's just like a much more productivity focused powerhouse and I didn't mind using this instead of my Mac at all. And it also made me realize that how the iPad now with that OS update is just so good for kind of an average user now. If you just want an iPad and you're not interested in having a laptop, you really can get away with it now. And I was tempted over these two weeks to just not use my Mac at all and just to focus on this, but it always comes down to video editing on me. There is great video editing stuff on here on the iPad like you saw before with DaVinci and Final Cut. But for me, I'm just so used to the Mac workflow that anytime I use the iPad for this sort of thing, it just slows down my workflow so much that it just makes it a bit too painful to use. Another thing which I have to mention because it happened while I was using the iPad for these two weeks is with the public beta update, they brought back SlideOver. This was mourned by the iPad community pretty heavily when they brought out iPad OS 26, but if you're on the public beta now, you can basically get access back to it. It's not quite the same as before, but the fact that it's here at all is awesome. To access it, if you just hold your finger on the traffic lights at the top left, and at the bottom, there's a new button which says enter slide over. And it works just like before. You can just push the app away, and then you can just swipe in from where it was before, and it will slide over the rest of your apps. It's not quite the same. You can't stack three apps on there like you could last time. This is limited to one app, but you can actually resize the app you've got in there at the moment, and you can slide that back and forth as you like. I know it's not perfect yet, but this is a really nice update to get, and I was so happy to see it back, and I think it's the perfect way to use Spotify or for ChatGPT or for WhatsApp here in the UK. It's just so nice having access to those all the time without kind of flying through your apps to refine them. So yeah, slide over's back. Just had to mention it because it's so good. 
So should you upgrade to this? And well, after using it for two weeks, I think it's really easy to say if you're on an M4, M3 or M2 version of the iPad, you're absolutely fine. But I must admit, I don't think Apple are trying to convince anyone on those chips to upgrade. And if you're on the M1, I really think you should only upgrade if you're hitting the limit at the moment. If your iPad is running fine, then you'll probably be more than fine. But if you are in those fringe sectors where you need more AI power or you need a bit more graphic compute or something like that, then you will notice a huge difference with the M5. And obviously you're getting an upgrade across the board anyway, because it's the redesigns. So you get that beautiful screen, the new slim design and the Apple Pencil Pro and a better keyboard. It's a pretty huge upgrade from there, just from a design perspective as well, which is awesome. And of course, if you are just looking at buying a new iPad, this just means you get the latest and greatest from Apple for the same price as last year which is nothing to really groan about. Anyway, that wraps this video up. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're actually looking to upgrade to the M5 or if this is your first iPad or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And I'm a pretty good replier. I reply to most comments when I can. And if you're a regular viewer and you've stuck this on for the video, my uh, injury is slowly getting better. So I should have more videos soon and apologies that this one took so long. As ever though, I will see you all in the next one.